Artist Tiny Love and uh, my man Papo Frank Rojas. Papo Frank Rojas. Um, this is a great interview for you guys out there, and hopefully we're gonna hit some good pointers, and uh, you know we're gonna learn some history on the rock way back. When you know? did you start dancing? Um, when did you start dancing? Uh, how did you get into dance? Who influenced you? And what year? Around what year? Um, well, again, I was I was born and raised in the Bronx. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I still live in the Bronx. I'm, I'm 54 years old. I started dancing. I actually started dancing in the late 60s. What happened was when I was about 11, about 10, 11 years old. But my father died when I was 11, and and then and then people in the neighborhood sort of like uh, you know felt bad for me. So everybody took me in. And what happened was the teenagers, you know, got, took a liking to me. Mm -hmm. So I used to watch them dance, and I used to pick up all the new dances that they did back then. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always, the, the, the new dance was always based on what record came out. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, so if it was, there was a record by James Brown called The Mother Popcorn, there's a dance that came out called oh, The Mother Popcorn. Wow. You know, there was Jackson 5, I Want You Back, there was a dance to that. ABC came out, there was a dance to that. Mm -hmm. So... That's how it was, you know, and, and they were basically house parties. So they used to, you know, from house to house, you know, basement to basement. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I started. I watched the older people. I, got, I, I picked up their steps really fast. Because I picked up their steps and I was so young, they thought I was cute. You know, the, the older guys, um, they would come get me, take me to other neighborhoods to dance against kids, you know, it's, you, know oh, you either wow. fought or you danced, one oh, or the other. Okay. I could do them both, but mm -hmm. I danced better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that, that's how it all started for me. That's when I developed the, the, the funk and the groove mm -hmm. that went with dance. I mean, people can do steps, but now can they do the funk and the groove with the steps? Mm -hmm. And that's what it was that I guess made me a little different for most of the kids. Mm -hmm. I could do it with the funk and the groove. I could do it exactly the way the older guys did it. Can I ask you what neighborhood in the Bronx? Yeah, I grew up around Prospect Avenue, uh, 181st, 182nd Street. That was Clinton, Cretona, which was four blocks away from the Bronx Zoo, Southern Boulevard. Okay. So, yeah, that was my area. That, you know, that's where I grew up. That's, yeah. That's, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, um, now, uh, so basically, um, I'm going to go into rock and... Uh, First question about rock, I want to know, what is rock dance to you? Define it. Oh, rock dance to me. Um, you know, when I first saw it, you know, I, I you know, immediately fell in love. Um, it, it, you know, rock also came around at a time where I needed something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my father had, had died. My father was murdered. You know, he was murdered on the street. Um, so he was there one day, gone the next, you know, I was, you know, combination of, of being, you know, you know, very much in pain, but I was also very angry. Mm -hmm. Um, so rock sort of like came around at a time for me when I could have really, you know, went south. I could have really went bad. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it, see, cause I also played baseball and my father was my coach. So oh, right. I couldn't play baseball anymore because any time I played, it was too painful to mm -hmm. play without him there. Um, so rock sort of like took the place of baseball. Mm -hmm. and, and with baseball, I worked every day, worked really hard. So I took that and I transferred it in, into rock. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I learned to dance. I, I, I went out and I watched the guys you know, who were there before me who could do this mm -hmm. dance eloquently you know so so I was fortunate to come at a time where I believe when rock was at its peak when oh, it was at wow. its best it was this was you know from 69 to about 73 maybe even mm. I think I think we broke it, it 76 maybe it, it, it really lasted you know I got in there I think late 71 um, but yeah, it was it was did, crazy. Did anybody like influence like like oh my I like that guy and I want to uh, dance was, like him. It was quite a few, you know. Oh. Back back in that time, you know, you had everybody did rock, mm -hmm. all right. 
but only a few could do it real good. Because rock is not easy. It, not to do it the right way, at, at least back in that time. Um, so, and, and that's, you know, that's more the information I have. Like, like today is a little different. Mm -hmm. And I'm not an expert on today because I hadn't danced for a long time. But that little time from 71 to 76, man, that was, that, those were my days. So, yeah, I mean, there was, um, I remember the first guy I met was at a basement. His name was Puppet. Um, I was just there hanging out. There wasn't many people. It was, you know, they had it looked like a club. They had aluminum on the floor, <laughs> on the wall. They had um, the, uh, you know, the light, uh, the the wall, the mirror. Um, so it was like a little disco. Mm -hmm. But I remember there wasn't anybody there, and this guy came in with a couple of other guys, and they started dancing, and I was like, wow, mm. you know, what is this? Mm. So, you know, I got up and I did a couple of steps and he saw me and he said, do this, you know. Uh, so I did that. Then he said, try this one. So, again, you know, picking up the steps really quickly. Um, I, you know, I had a friend who was hanging out with me and he couldn't do it. Um, so I, I, you know, they took to me again. And that night he took me to a club. And this was in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So he, he, I went from a basement party to a club called The Joint. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was called, it's, you know, it's, again, in the neighborhood, you know, I walked in, it was pretty amazing, you know, everything was in black, you know, again, the, 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 the strobe light, the, the mirror bar, I mean, it was the lights, I, you know, I never saw anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 but you know? that, that, that time, yeah, was amazing. Yeah, the music was like banging, yeah. banging, banging, wow. but it was still, it was empty, not too many people there. Mm -hmm. So, but, but we danced, you know, I think I danced that whole night with him, it mm -hmm. turned into like a practice session. Nice. Um, and then that was it. From there on, you know, I just, every day, you know, I would practice what he showed me. Um, he'd come around the neighborhood again because he, you know, he took to me. Mm. I, was, I was about two years younger than him. Um, and we would practice. He'd show me moves and I'd get them. And, you know, and then he said, you know, you're ready to go downtown, you know. And, oh, yeah? Yeah. And that, you see, that, that's where all the rock dancers who could dance went. You know, the, downtown you, Manhattan. Downtown so Manhattan. Knows. Yeah, Manhattan. Okay, yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, there was a club. My first club was called the Fresh. Um, that was, I think, Forty Eighth or Forty Seventh and Seventh Avenue. Mm. Um, so, you know, although you had guys who danced in the Bronx, you had mm. guys who danced in Brooklyn, Queens. All the boroughs had their dancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you was anybody. And you could dance, you went downtown. That was like the capital of rock. Oh, you wow. know? So there was the Fresh, there was also the Contiki. Mm -hmm. That's when I went. Now, before, okay. even before well, me. One second. Yes. Contiki is a, it's a club. Manhattan? Yeah, Manhattan it? also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All the clubs I'm talking about right now, they, they, they're from Manhattan. So it was the Fresh and the Contiki. I went okay. back Thanks. and forth, yeah. you know, to those clubs. Um, before it, it was the zoo, the sanctuary. Uh, the Ruby Fool, I mean, a host of clubs, Pegasus, mm. I mean, the Cheetah. These were all clubs that were there before I, you know, before I came out. Now, um, so when I went to the Fresh, you mm. asked, you know, if I was yeah, influenced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was just, the dancers were off the hook, man. Yeah. You know, when I went in there, I was like, I mean, I didn't move. I, I just oh, sat in the corner and, and just watched. Um, and it was really cool. Then, then um, I mean, everybody, there was a lot of people who could dance there, but I remember the, the dance floor opening up in a circle. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It was a circle. So what happened? What happened? Well, I went and I checked who was in the circle, and it was, um, you know, later I, I found out their name. It was Johnny and Hector, and oh. they were both from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And these guys, they danced together. They mm -hmm. did routines. Oh. And they were off the hook, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were perpetual motion. These guys were flat out speed. I mean it was oh. their footwork. Everything they did was was based on speed. Mm. Um, so those were the first two dancers that I saw that I liked. Now that night I saw a rubber band, rubber band dance that night. Um, I saw this other guy, Little, who was who was just amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was he was the first one that I saw do jerks. Oh um, okay, yeah. Jerks. And he was he was really good. I mean he did I mean, he, you know, he was the best mm -hmm. at it. And, and mm -hmm. he, didn't, he just didn't do jerks. He had jerks, and he would do a host of other steps oh. that went with the jerks. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, he, today, the guys I like is, um, the guys I like watching is Worry, the, the Warrior, mm -hmm. and um, Crazy Smooth. Mm -hmm. um, 
because they do jerks, but they do a host of other steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what we did on, in our time. We mm -hmm. did like a host of steps. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just one step to the beat. Mm -hmm. It was this step, then that step. I mean, we had like, you know, maybe like 12 to 15 different steps to wow. go, you know, with, with the record. And then we would put it in routines. Um, so, yeah, Johnny and Hector were the first ones I saw. Um, I fell in love with them. Um, I saw a rubber band that night. I saw a little, I saw this other guy, Mexico. Um, yeah, and heard, they were, they, yeah, they were all Mexico. good dancers. They were just different mm -hmm. um, from the guys that I liked. You know, the guys that I liked, you know, they, they had this funk and groove and a lot of speed to them. Mm -hmm. You know, rubber band, Mexico. They were more like, they did more like floor moves. I, you know, I don't remember if I saw a rubber band do jerks. People say he did, but I, I don't remember seeing that. You know, I remember rubber band very specifically. As a matter, as a matter of fact, I could imitate rubber band the way he danced. I can't do his floor moves because rubber Kenny, band was also yeah. double jointed, and he used oh, to do splits. Okay. He did splits, half splits. He did something with his leg. I mean, he would do, you know, these crazy floor moves that really would wow people. You know, mm -hmm. but his dancing to me wasn't what these other guys did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went to the fresh, Contiki, back and forth. Um, my boy Puppet, you know, the, uh, the old guy, who, you know, took me under his wing. Mm -hmm. You know, he had said that I needed to see this guy named Paulie dance, mm -hmm. that Paulie was the best. Paulie was number one. And that's the other thing in those days. Just, I guess just like these days, because when you hear people talk about dancers, they talk about Wiggles and Fable and, yeah. and Ken Swift being mm -hmm. the best dancers. Mm -hmm. Well, back in those days, you had the same thing. You know, you had, um, this, when I first came out, people would talk about Paulie, you know. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I went to the club uh, every weekend to see Paulie dance, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, I never got to see him dance. Mm -hmm. I think he had stopped. I don't know what happened, but Paulie was not around anymore. There was Lucky, there was Bones. Um, then later on, you know, I saw Dee Dee dance, and, and, and Dee Dee learned a lot from Paulie. Dee Dee was another great dancer. And then the guys who influenced me most were some brothers from 90th Street mm -hmm. who... Um, that's Manhattan again? That's Manhattan. They, they lived in Manhattan, uptown Manhattan. Okay. Now, I saw them um, downtown Manhattan on 14... Actually, it was 18th Street and Broadway. It was called The Footsteps. Oh, wow. Um, and, and it was an after hour. It opened up at 12. And they had a dance contest every Friday and every Saturday. So that's where all the best dancers would go. Mm -hmm. And that's when I seen Mike Dominguez, um, Danny Rodriguez, tall Danny, we call him. Like, at the time, he looked like he was 6'10", you know? Mm -hmm. uh, he was bigger than life because the brother was a beautiful dancer. Um, and his partner, Hector. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing was the girls were just oh, as yeah. good as the guys. Tell me there something was, about that. Tell well, there was I'm one girl who was better that. than all the guys. Her name oh, was yeah? Anna. Oh, yeah. Well, what's she, her she, name? Anna. 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 I don't know where she is. I don't, you know, she disappeared. That's the other thing about that generation. Everybody just disappeared. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah, to me, they, it's yeah, like, yeah, they just there's so much history there, you know? There is, there is. It was, a, it was a, a, a time in which, I mean, it was probably the best time in my life in terms of mm -hmm. fun mm -hmm. um, and dancing, you know, taught me to be creative, mm -hmm. um, become a creative thinker. Mm -hmm. So everything I do is, has a flair of creativity. And even, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional counselor. I work with kids, mm -hmm. even with dad. So the same, you know, I've been able to take that discipline and apply it across the board. So again, I just say that, you know, it was a very powerful time, man. It mm -hmm. really, it really was. Amazing. And the dancing was, was awesome. So those are the guys, you know, who influenced me. Um, there was Anna, um, who danced with a girl named Janet. And again, everybody had a partner back then. Everybody had a partner, oh. and everybody, you know, did routines in the contest. Mm. It was never one on one. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 burning. You know, we used the word burning, but it wasn't like, you know, how they use things to embarrass people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really that. It was just who could dance better. If was I it? dance better than you, then I burned you. Oh, wow. You know, so it was, it was all about what you did, the steps, your moves. Was it 